evaluate your shelf life, I guess my name specifically Jake got his, his first start, I guess how, how did you do in that capacity? Yeah, that was Rizzy's first time really getting some action and, um, you know, put him into a, a, a real situation. I thought uh, Miami's front was really good. There was a lot of pressure. I thought he pushed the pocket. But I think he showed that he can function and, and, and do longs and can do it at this level. So I was proud to see him go out there and compete, you know, and, and, and showcase what he can do. I think he's a, you know, he's intelligent. He knows how to do it. He's gotten better. He's been in the young guy scrimmages, kind of fighting for his way to get that opportunity. So it was good to see him get an opportunity. I thought it was good having Rob available to do what he can do and, and help out. I mean, he's been steady at it to see him kind of bounce back and go out there and compete to, to a level of, of that gives us a chance to win. I thought that was really good too. Um, I thought overall too much, like not only the sacks, but just pressure situations where you got the quarterbacks to get off the spot. We got to do better with, especially our younger quarterbacks and giving them time to kind of see it and purvey it and giving them a little bit extra time to make sure that they see it as, as they're progressing. And um, I thought in that aspect, and I didn't like some of the communication mishaps that we had, whether it be, you know, not having two pullers, not having this from the, whether it be noise, communication, what it was, I thought it was too many of those. Um, and taking accountability in that aspect of it. But I thought, you know, we got to be, you know, they're just not talking about that game. We got to be better overall in all aspects as we move forward. William here in the second row. Yeah, Alex, you mentioned the communication issues. Mike talked about it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have so many different starters every week, you know, seven, I think, different offensive line starters mm -hmm. and changes at quarterback, is it difficult to build that rhythm and that feel with those guys? And how do you kind of adapt to it in game and going forward these next four games? You know, I was fortunate, you know, you know, it's not planned and it's nothing I really wanted to do or came into and said I was going to, you know, whether it be changing the personnel of, of performance or injuries and, and things of that nature. Same thing at quarterback where, you know, you have a lot of reps built into it and the success we've had in the past came from having consistent, healthy, you know, the same people out there, of course, but you got to be able to adapt and improvise and we got to make sure that the plan we're giving them can be executed. So take ownership if there's if there is communication problems or mishaps that means that I put too much on them you know I got to make sure that it can be something as simple as I can now we're trying to do that to put them in the best possible position to make them not do something that they're not capable of doing um, so sometimes you have to have those to make sure we're not running into bad looks but if it's, if it's happened too many times that means I gave them too much so I got to do a good job of moving forward and making sure the plan fits where we don't have that and that's, that's my responsibility Jordan? Coach, a lot of the position groups on offense have gotten younger, specifically the receivers, but the offensive line, the starting offensive line has gotten older. Is that a reflection of some of the young guys not being developed, you're not happy with their development, or is it just the offensive line, you need older guys out there because there's just so much going on? No, there's a balance. I mean, uh, like I brought up Rob Scott earlier. Rob Scott was a guy that, you know, when I first got here, he had to play because he was a young guy and he was a better one in the room. And it affected his career heavily because I think, you know, his body has taken a toll of not having a true offseason, having to have surgery in the offseason. Um, because playing that position is a physical position. So if you throw a young guy out there when he's not ready, you usually see a high injury rate, especially for body development and things like that. And um, so he's, he's an example of, you know, not saying that you're not believing in the younger guys. You also want to, don't want to jeopardize their career and their future with injuries because of, of panic and, and, and self preservation. Um, so, you know, I made a vow after Rob that. I was gonna make sure I do right by those young guys and make sure their bodies are ready for to withstand the game before I put them in harm's way. And I think, you know, with Otto, he's shown the case his ability he can do that because of his body. Um, Rizzy, not his, he's an older guy, but still coming to this level and being able to kind of perform in those series in that situation and, and making sure that they're able to do that. And then I put Lucas in at the end of the game to kind of see, you know, all right, is he ready? Because even he, Lucas has an elbow uh, brace on, you know, because of his, his it's something he suffered from. So. Making sure that you know those guys' body are ready to withstand the punishment of the game is important, and it's hard to do that when you got a guy that's been through one offseason that's probably going against somebody that's been through four offseasons just off natural strength. So I mean, it does create opportunity. I'm not gonna hold anybody back if you're, you know, if you're ready to go, and I think your body can go. I'm gonna put you out there because I wanna put our best, our best chance we gotta win, and I'm gonna put the guys out there. But I think as we're moving forward, because those guys are still doing the young guy lift in the morning, they're still growing stronger. He's still putting it in, like Jalen Early, who was a two-year guy, got a lot, getting a lot of action. He's hitting that red shirt sophomore when their body types are able to handle it. And he's been out there doing well for us, so and he's going to continue to grow as his rep count goes up. So that's more the progression that I want to see with really that red shirt sophomore year. Now, if you just better, we'll put you out there. I mean, but I still got to be mindful of the past when I've seen guys get thrown out there and what that done for their career later on. Ira. There were times in that game where you look out and there's you know, freshman quarterback, 
a bunch of freshman skill guys. Mm -hmm. um, is it is it difficult to give those guys these opportunities to, to see if they can do something for you guys and prove themselves versus trading maybe the problems you have for, for, for different problems, just having so many young guys out there? Yeah, they, they we, we don't, I mean, it's not trading problem. I mean, they've earned the right to be out there. You know, it's not just, oh, you messed up, put the next guy in. No, I mean, through practices, through those Sunday night practice, they've earned the right for those reps. And, and of course, there's always going to be learning and improvement, but they've earned the right to be out there, not as well. And then if you do have problems with older guys, that's going to create competition, and they're going to compete in practice, and they've earned those reps that they've gotten. But they're going to learn and grow experiences. I mean, that's going to be a part of their progression. But, yeah, you're going to have, you know, you put a young guy out there, everybody, every coach knows what's going to happen when you put a young guy out there. It's going to be somewhat, sometimes, a little bit different in practice because it's a different environment, different emotional state. And the only way you can get through that is to play them. So I think them guys going out there and starting to get those tastes and things like that because one thing our players know is we're doing everything for the betterment of their development in the future. It's not just immediate reaction. It's more of like, hey, man, when you're ready to go out there, because I've seen confidence get killed from things like that too. You put a guy out there too young. But I think those young receivers, man, they've done a good job of earning those, the reps that they're getting. And they're, just, they're excited to showcase their ability. Chris? With regards to Andre, what is he good at in the sense of playing center? Because obviously there's a great deal of duties there. And how is he as a snapper? <clears throat> Yeah, he's played quite a bit of center. I would say, you know, transitioning to it, Andre is one of those guys that he's a smart, highly intelligent kid. So he's played pretty much all the positions at the O-line. He was one that we can cross train pretty quickly. Um, he came in on Sunday night and did a lot of the center reps. Of course, he got to be more consistent when he's snapping and pulling or usually like either snap or going left or right. It's always a little bit of adjustment for those young centers when they go out there. But I trust Otto at the position. You know, Rizzi also played the center position. And so Otto, Rizzi, and Mo have all been repping that position. Um, and then, of course, Richie Leonard was repping it as well. So um, they all, you know, that's that's their center position. So, and it could be Rizzi going to center. It could be Otto coming in at guard. I, I trust those guys snapping the football and playing when they're out there. Uh, what did you like and, and what, did, what does Rizzi have to work on? I mean, getting that many live game opportunities, especially against a good defensive front, like what did you learn about him and, and where can he go? Well, he got to let it loose because a couple of times he understepped himself and trying to make sure something before it happens. And he, he realized, like, you know, the game is fast. Now the guys are going to be reacting pretty quickly. So, you know, the first play of the game, we were running the screen, and, you know, he's going to block back on the nose. And he kind of short-stepped it on the first. I'm like, man, let that thing loose and go cover him up. And I think he saw that. So as the game progressed, I saw his confidence grow, his movements grow, and, and he started to play better toward the end of the game. So I was proud to see that that progression, and I'm excited to see how it kind of goes forward. But when you're out there, you got to let it loose. You can't overthink yourself. You can't got to go play free, and, 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 and you have to be the dictator and not always reacting. Because if you're reacting to the situation, you're a step late. Players are good enough to get on you pretty quick. So I think him just having more confidence in himself as the game grew is going to help him as he's going forward. Jordan. Coach, Coach Mondale mentioned it earlier, but slow starts have been a problem for the offense all year long. Just what do you think is the reason for that? And just in these next four games, how much of a focus is it to get off to a faster start? Yeah, I mean, it's slow starting quite. We, we need a lot of things to kind of trigger a little bit faster on offense around here. But um, I think it's, it's a combination of multiple things. Whenever you, you know, you're down at this depth low on offense, it's not just one particular thing or one particular change. It's a multitude of things that you kind of got to chip away at it to make sure there's some improvement. But there's also a personal accountability to making sure whatever we're asking to be improved is being highly focused and prioritized by the players that are being asked to do it. And that's why you see the kind of the rotation, talk about young receivers coming in, rotation at the line and all that kind of good stuff, because it does provide opportunity, which can sometimes create more problems because you you don't have the continuity that's building. But, you know, it's just finding something that'll give you some positivity and, and putting the right mindset out there that at least this guy is willing to go out there and sacrifice it all to do the job right and kind of come out on top. So I think, you know, keep emphasizing what we emphasize. I mean, we started slow, we, we knew how to start fast, but we got to make sure that everything is being evaluated and make sure everybody's taking a step forward no matter what a position they're in on offense. Any other questions? How do you guys handle, um, you know, when, when individual guys might be having improvements, uh, but the team is not having success? Um, but you don't want to come across as positive, probably, because the team's not doing well. But you know, how do you guys balance that in terms of 
guys focusing on themselves and seeing and appreciating where they're getting better, um, while obviously the whole team is, is not where it needs to be. That's where it starts is, is the team gets better as every individual makes the commitment to improve themselves daily. So you have to be able to showcase that and put it on display like this is where you were. You took a step today. Did you take a step today? Coach, like the big thing about us is we break rocks after games. And Coach asks, you know, have you been breaking rocks each day? Did you break the rock Sunday? Did you break the rock Monday? What did you do individually to kind of make sure that you had success on that day for improvement? And as that happens, that's when all that kind of comes and you get better as a team. So, I mean, I think you still have to recognize individual improvement, even if it's minor. And if even it's something like telling the tackle, hey, you punched too early and he might get beat another way, but he didn't punch too early, say, man, that's what I want you to do. Now let's go to the next thing. So I think you still have to address and, and showcase guys when they're taking that daily growth, but also, you know, showing how it affects the whole when you don't. And, and I think that's more the, the deal is that if we're not taking those individual improvements daily, you get the result that you get where your team is kind of not. Performance needs to be. Coach, following up on that, with the season that you guys are having, especially offensively, is it hard to keep guys motivated or focused? I mean, do you still see the same level of commitment in the team that you did at the beginning of fall camp? Yeah, I don't see a change in, in work ethic. I think um, that, that's that been consistent, but also we got to be willing to, to not have as many mistakes when it's actually live and bullets are going. So it's not really giving a motivational speech or, or trying to inspire for you know just work it's just more of your individual performance and how is it going daily so that's why i think goes back to that question is that's how you keep them going is those small individual goals that keep them going and keep them wanting to improve themselves for self you know i want to make sure i'm getting better and i think that motivates that individual as they see those small steps taking place and a lot of these guys have seen that in other ways but we got to make sure we're doing it better as a collective absolutely we do Anything else? Okay, thanks, sir. Thank y'all.